evening uh, here, anyway, in Atlanta. It's uh, 6.15. Oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> Darn. Newbie mistake. And actually, I have one open here. I bet I need to mute it, too. I guess we're still always... Yep. Oh, yeah. Nice. Got it. <laughs> Quick. So, anyway, um, tonight we're going to do another opening, the Caro Con or the Caro Con. I guess the Caro Con. But I don't know. I've heard it both ways. But Spencer says Caro, so I'm going to say Caro. And you guys can correct us if we're wrong. Or um, if we're right. <laughs> yeah. Or maybe you can say it both ways. It's not clear to me. But um, once people get here, we'll do our uh, typical... What do you think we should do? I can't remember. Did we do hand and brain last time? We did do hand and brain, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we did at the beginning. Hey, look, Sankey Maru's. Uh, oh, that's cool. Do you know who that is? I don't want to say it. I don't want to dox him. I think him, I know who it is. So I'm not going to say it, but we know him in real life. <laughs> yeah, then definitely. There's no way he's on the stream. No? You <laughs> no. Don't think so? No, he, he challenged him. I mean, maybe. Speak now if you're on the stream, Sankey Maru. I don't think you are. Or forever hold your peace. <laughs> Hey, trying not to learn. Okay, good. I have never played the Caro Con in my whole life, ever, unless I did accidentally. Hey, Deshaun Kit Kat. How do you accidentally play it? I don't know. <laughs> like, just playing it and not Last realize slip. it. <laughs> well, I don't even know what the moves are, so I'm saying I could have played it and just doing some random moves, especially when I was starting out and right. I didn't know openings. You just moved some pawns mm -hmm. out and knights and bishops, and maybe I did and didn't know it. Um, so it looks like, um, let me get over here. This mouse is, uh, there we go. It gets lost. This doesn't really show who's streaming. Is, uh... Maybe that's fine. I guess it doesn't matter. <laughs> All right, looks like we have nine viewers. Nine. <laughs> hey, Jen. Hey, Jen 999. How's it going? Oh, and up cables. Here. Hey, up cable. We're going to do some Caro Khan learning momentarily. Oh, and Pam's in here. Hey, too? Pam. Aw, thank you. I was just singing that song today around the house Carol King song beautiful and ben didn't know it so i guess it must not be well known i'm sure you don't oh no it's not your maybe generation you got to get up every morning you know it? beautiful with a smile on your <laughs> face oh you have to get to the chorus show the world all the love in your heart that's not the chorus yet is it because uh -uh. <laughs> you're beautiful as you feel I don't know that one. Yeah, I was surprised Finn didn't know it. You were playing the rat earlier? Is that like E6 bishop B4 check? Or something like that? Or is it D6 E5? Hmm. I don't even think I've heard of the rat. Right. Is that a variant of um, Caro Khan or just some other opening? Uh, no, I, I think it's when black plays D6 E5. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure, though. E4, D6. Mm. So I was right about that part. Mm -hmm. But, you know, that could be like, that could be the Pirates, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's if you don't play a Pirates, but you oh. play one D6. Hmm. Or like you don't play a Pirates or a Modern. Like you just play some something other than those two. Oh, did you sub? Oh, I see it up there. Sorry. I want, thank you for subbing, trying not to learn. Um, thank you, Pam. We go to karaoke. Spencer <laughs> and I. True. Ben goes sometimes, but he since COVID started, he doesn't go anymore. And I don't blame him. I was a little uncomfortable last time we went. It got really crowded. Mm -hmm. And I was telling Ben that I could smell the smoker's smoke, which means I guess I was getting some of their COVID exhalations too. <laughs> but at least the smoke like killed all the COVID. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> hey, That's McJurgle. what we have. Hey, McJurgle, how's it going? I wonder if we have the... If we should re-examine the settings over here, can well actually can you get well when we start moving what? pieces, uh -oh. let us know if the chess pieces are the correct volume. 
Or maybe that was desktop audio. And we don't have to do it through there. Actually, it was. Should be fine. <laughs> oh, I did ask you guys, and you said not to go, but I went. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, they heard the whoop. Right? We got a Yeah, yeah, that's trying not to hey, learn. Hey, Pewdiefiero. <laughs> Pewdiefiero. <laughs> uh, hey, Pewdiefiero. You just me you missed me singing a little bit. Pewdiefiero. <laughs> well, I was surprised that people don't know that song, but I guess it is f an old song, not one of her more famous songs. Carol King. All right. I'm going to play. Should we play or should I play? What just should, you. Just me? All right. I'm going to play you trying not to learn. <laughs> Especially yeah, they, since he just subbed. Yeah, thank you for that sub, and I will try to figure out why we didn't hear it. I heard it. You smoke, and you don't like going to a place where there are a lot of smokers. I could see that, that um, it's different breathing secondhand smoke than, you know, your own smoke. Uh, all right, let me figure out how to get over here. If you play E5 against me, I'll play the Carol Khan. Too bad it's illegal to play E5. Well, <laughs> he meant E4, yeah. <laughs> hey, hey, Tyak, oh, Kappa's DC. Kappa's in here, too. Kappa, one of my favorites. Hey, Kappa. Definitely. <laughs> All right, let's go try not to learn. Oh, Pam wants to play. You know what to do, Pam. <laughs> Send that challenge. Oh, C.L. Smith subscribed. Yay. Thank you, C.L. Smith. Thank you. Yay. Go, Karen. Go, Spencer. <laughs> nice. Karen just doing her thing. I actually did start, and it, I got interrupted because I'm so busy, trying to review all the opening stuff that you've told us on the stream, so I was just mm -hmm. watching our own our streams. <laughs> <laughs> That's exciting. Yeah. And I was like, oh yeah, you did say that. I was reviewing the situation where they go, they get to over, yeah, to this diagonal, but not in this position. Right. And, um, where you take the night and such. Yeah, yeah. Night, yeah. But then, I'm, so I was very early on in my review and then I didn't get to finish. So that was Dang. unfortunate. Is there play with the viewers? That's what we're doing right now, the mm -hmm. lonely Joey. Yeah, definitely. Hi, Cuddy Pie. I think she means cutie pie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, probably. C.L. Smith, Cuddy Pie. Mm. Well, let me see what I want to do. What to do? Yeah, I really don't I'll know. I'll back it up. I really don't know what to do. <laughs> Once I review those videos, I'll know what to do. <laughs> I mean, we didn't look at this position. I know. <laughs> but I'm going to have all that knowledge. I'll be ready. Ready Girls for you. Girls go to college to get more knowledge. Girls do? Yeah. That's how the jump roping goes. You know, like oh. when you do jump rope rhymes. Oh. Girls go to college to get more knowledge. Boys go to Jupiter to get more stupider. Yeah. <laughs> Classic rhyme. I never heard all that. Oh yeah, yep. Yeah, trying to trying not to learn. Got it. <laughs> you really didn't hear that one? I guess no. when you were a kid, they said different things. I don't even remember. I wasn't that into jump roping. I was. I jump um, roped all the time. You did? No. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I do remember on the playground we had a jump rope, and there would be some sayings and what have you. Um, so that, I do remember that, I just don't remember what they were. I remember one of the really mean sayings on the playground was, fatty, fatty, two by four, can't get through the bathroom door. <laughs> and two, that's, two by four is just randomly put in there because it rhymes with door. <laughs> I know, and it's not very nice, obviously, but uh, that was a saying that I do recall from the playground. Uh... That's true, C.L. Smith, but at least it's a place that, well, you can't really go there because I guess it's 
made out of gas or something. <laughs> <laughs> I don't really understand planets. Yay, I heard a noise. Thank you, Deshaun Kit Kat. Nice. 33 bits, because three is such a mm -hmm. cool number. Oh, Lady Buell's in here. Lady. <laughs> Go, Lady. Darn. I hate those nights. They're in my way. What One of these crazy do? nights. And then now my bishop's attacked. Hmm. So I could try to move away. Maybe I just What's there to do in Atlanta besides visit them. the airport? Okay. There's also a Coke factory to visit. You know, I don't feel like Atlanta has as much going on as Philadelphia, for example, which is one of my favorite cities. But there's stuff to do. Philly, now you're talking. That's some history. Hey, kangaroo. Kangaroo, hey. It seems like we didn't see you for a while. But um, I think you weren't on Ben's stream. But I wasn't really on Ben's stream that much either. Jupiter has too much radiation, Kappa says. Although I paraphrased. Mm -hmm. Dang. Poor Jupiter. Oh, they're too late for you? I know. They're too late for me. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm here. I was on part of it, and then I had to take my children home, take my youngest home. And then it was a nice stream, too. He was going over... Uh, games from women players. Are you guys still teaching your students online at this time or just Twitch streaming whilst things are closed? Good question, Jen. I am teaching some online students mm -hmm. and also Twitch streaming. Yeah. I'm not going to do it. Never, never going to get it. <laughs> yeah, it's a bummer. The chess center's closed. But um, then last night, um, you know, I went home. I was so tired, and I was on Ben's stream. Then he rain, raided video oh, yeah. game uh, pianist. Yeah, hey, he's famous, and I didn't even know it. Um, for doing blindfold Mario Brothers. Like, he's oh. really into trying to popularize not only the piano as an instrument, but also video game music. He's done a lot with video game music. I love video game music. Yeah, and I knew you did. Uh, he's actually, fa I didn't know he was famous, but he's famous. <laughs> Thanks, I'm only here stuff. for the chess for subscribing. So, you, I, t I was checking out his wiki. That is pretty cool about video game pianist. Yeah, he's. An, I really love that guy. And then, so I was up late watching the, his stream after Ben raided him. And. Um, oh, I watched it for a little bit. Yeah. He was playing some Scott Joplin. Mm hmm. Scott Joplin died of syphilis. Fun oh, fact. I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah, he died doing what he loved. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. And poor Scott. Well, and then the guy, I can play the piano. Absolutely. I'm not great, but um, I used to take lessons. I started taking as an adult. Um, That's pretty cool. Which is very rare. And I got to early advanced level. I can play some Beethoven, but one of the easier sonatas. You can't play the really hard ones. Oh, no, that doesn't seem good. Uh, oh no, that's not good. Oh, what do I do with this guy? He seems to block everything. I can play some guitar, but not the piano. I always wanted to play the piano, but they didn't really have piano class at my high school. They did have guitar, though. Um... Let's see. Oh, that's cool, Pam. What did Pam say? She plays the guitar uh, and the drums. Mm-hmm. It's kind of lucky there, huh? What, did I miss something? A little. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what did I miss? Um... I don't know what I missed. 
Well, you don't have to worry about that now. <laughs> All right, well, let me. Hi, guys. That Carlson Ding game was mad. I don't really know about that stuff. I haven't been following any of that, you know, personally. Uh-oh. That was it. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Darn, I guess I should resign. Except for he, we're low on time here. Yeah, so, come on, just win on time now. Yeah. With some Karen-approved pre-moves. Yeah. Eat. Darn, I suck. Nice. Already back in it. Um. Always play that. Who ended up winning that game? Oh, shit, I just missed getting his queen. Because <laughs> I did that stupid pre-move. That's all right. <laughs> just keep pre-moving. Freaking hate pre-moves. I could tell. Uh-oh. Uh. All right. Dang, not enough pre-moves. <laughs> yeah. Tough but fair. Good game. God damn it. <laughs> Hello, Nicole, Nicola. <laughs> Good game. Uh, try not to learn. Carlson <laughs> ended up winning that one, huh? Nice. Oh, yeah. But I didn't see that. Ben told me about it. <clears throat> I was busy doing some other things. Yeah, good game. Um, yeah, and I missed getting your queen there. The Yangs are these stupid pre-moves. Well, I, had to I do would have pre-moved more if I were you. Yeah, I had to do them. It was, you know, I shouldn't have let the game be in that state at that point. So obviously I'm going to miss stuff if I pre-move. I like how he's got Never Play F6 shirt in his picture there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Good shirt. Good stuff. Mm -hmm. Well, what are people doing? Why is GG almost pre-moved to win? Um, I'm wondering... Tani commented for like 45 minutes. You mean Tanya? Nechik? Yeah, McJurgle. I, uh, I played Breath of the Wild. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I beat it. <laughs> Definitely a great game. Probably my favorite game on the Switch. Or maybe even of all time. Hmm. Oh, Tani, the, Niger the nine-year-old Nigerian kid. Oh, yeah, I heard about him. Where did, I heard about him, too, but I've never seen him or know anything other than just aware that he he's alive. Right. <laughs> Where did he comment? He did commentary somewhere? Um, well, oh, and Chess 24. Well, that's interesting. Tani and Tanya. <laughs> well, maybe we should start the lesson, or do we want to... Go over the game real quick? Yeah, we can do that. All right, we're going to analyze the game real quick, and then we're going to start talking about the Carol Con. Hey, a GM Benjamin Feingold. Then we can play some more at the end. He says he can beat Nakamura in a 10-game match. I find that hard to believe. Or, you know, what? That seems hard to believe. All right. <laughs> Here you sh we were talking about you should play h3 when they play d6 because then you can't play bishop e5 anymore if yeah. they play knight h5. Mm -hmm. So he could have played knight h. It's not a big deal, but you know. Mm -hmm. Since I don't like it, yeah, I right. should, should do that. Didn't yeah. really understand a3, but what else? Well, I thought that um, knight to b4 and then knight to c2. Yeah, we just go here. Would be night before you move your rook, or you don't care about it. Mhm. Mm yeah, your rook's not trapped if you move your knight out, out of the way. Mhm, mm that's true. Yeah, I probably should have done that. It's all right. I mean, a three doesn't hurt you. Don't really know why he did that, but you know, got to do something, I guess. Mm -hmm. Got to nuke something. You gotta make, 
yeah, make some kind of Got to progress, appreciate to graduate. In quotes. <laughs> this is a pretty double-edged move here. Oh, you wanted to win the pawn? This pawn? But you didn't win it. So, how did that happen? I would try to go here at some point. Because mm -hmm. then your bishop would be happy. Yeah. But your d-pawn is kind of weak, so... I guess it's okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'd never trade away that bishop here. Just back it on up, protect it. Yeah. Wasn't sure what to do. Yeah, now it's pretty even. I mean, I think black's a little bit better because your c-pawn's a little bit weak. Mm -hmm. This bishop's a little bit better than yours. But it should still be pretty even. Yeah, that was good. Nice move there. Really good play by both sides. Black's doing nothing. White's doing nothing. Really nice maneuvers here. Yeah, here they're threatening this. Then you played here allowing it still. Then they missed it. Then they saw it and then went back threatening it again. <laughs> I just didn't see it. Dang. Big fork. Yeah. And then they hung their knight. Then they hung their queen later. I don't see pins very well. But yeah, mostly you didn't pre-move enough around here. Mm -hmm. Or like hardly at all. He had more time than me already. Still, he was playing kind of slow. But mm. you, like around here, you weren't pre-moving at all. You were like this, and then when it was your turn, you'd move it. I'm like, why isn't she pre-moving? Yeah. Pre-move pre those random moves. That's the perfect time to pre-move. Yeah, that's true. Because there's not really a lot I got yeah, going on there. You don't got to think about nothing. <laughs> Tough game, though. Overall, yeah. it was pretty good before the queen hang and such. Yeah. But that's how it goes at an R. Kelly party. <laughs> <laughs> All right, folks. We're going to start it up. Caro Khan, here we go. we got almost 50 viewers. Why are, where are all our people? Because sometimes we can get 100. Now, mm -hmm. let's see. Indo Queen's got 21. Siphoning our viewers. <laughs> <laughs> Stojan, okay. A bunch of people on here. Neiman, there are a lot of people, but um, she is not even doing chess. Dang. And um, let's see, I gotta look at, see who, not that it mattered, I wanna just complain for a minute. Where are people? Gotham Chess is on. Hi, me on Twitch. Oh, he's doing a Pog Champs lesson. And then I was on the boat test stream and they're just, they're talking. I can't imagine a lot of the people are interested in it. Mm -hmm. I was interested in it because he was talking about streaming and business stuff with streaming and YouTube. Mm -hmm. But they weren't playing anything. And Andrea was there, bored out of her mind. <laughs> right. Because that's not really what she's into. But um, Botez is really actually very knowledgeable about all that. She had a startup, as most people probably know. Anyway, let's get going. All right, yeah, we could talk about some Carol Khan. Um, we'll just look at, like, it, it'll be, like, a briefing, so we, we won't go too in-depth. But we'll look at, like, the main stuff. And, uh, like, what any Carol Khan player would start learning, basically. Use that to cheat. Good. <laughs> All right. You you beat Andrea. Well, she's way better than me, so you must be pretty good, Nicola. I think she's around 1,900 in real life. I believe it. Mm -hmm. So this is the start of the Carol Khan. Okay, so let me pay attention. C6. It's a lot like the French. You want to play D5. In the French, you play E6 to play D5, so it's a little different there because in the French, you block your bishop. In a Carol Khan, you don't block your bishop. So that's the benefit of playing the Carol Khan. Okay. You get to get your bishop out in most variations. Oh, I see. The downside of playing the Carol Khan is that you often, later in the middle game, you want a pawn break with mm -hmm. C5 which will cost black a tempo because you've already played c6. As opposed to in the French, when you, your pawn is on c7, you play c5 in one move. Mm -hmm. So that's the benefit of playing the French over the Carol Khan is that you don't move your c-pawn early, so it'll it'll save you some time in a French. French is a little faster. Oh, I see. Oh, and I should tell our chatters that, not that it matters that much, I've never played this opening ever. And with all the other ones that we've gone over, I might not have been that knowledgeable, but I have played those so mm -hmm. this is i'm like virgin with this opening so d4 that's the main move as you might expect but there are other options and d5 mm -hmm. so 
here, most grandmasters nowadays, I would say they prefer to play e5. But let's first look, which is the advanced variation, as you might imagine. Mm -hmm. But let's look at uh, the old main line, which is knight c3. Knight c3 and knight d2, they usually transpose because black almost always takes anyway. And then white will take back. Hmm, okay. Like this. So now in this position, black has three moves that grandmasters play. Bishop f5 is by far the most common. We'll look at that first. Um, also, knight d7, that's known as the Karpov variation. Karpov liked to play knight f6, but he didn't want you to double his pawns. So he's getting protecting it. Mm -hmm. You can also just play knight f6 and, and let them take the knight and double your pawns. We're taking back both ways are, are both viable. Let's look at bishop f5 first, though, huh? Okay. Knight g3. Yeah, and now, so like I said in the Karakhan, you get out your bishop, right? Mm -hmm. So that's why it's not like a French. Um, but white's just going to go harass this bishop. You know, white's just going to go harass that bishop with h4, threatening to win it with h5. That wins a piece. Mm -hmm. So you're going to have to play h6. Then uh, they could play h5 first, but I, most people actually play knight f3 first. That threatens, in air quotes, knight e5. And so that's why black usually plays knight d7. You don't really have to, but mm -hmm. you know, usually you do that. h5, bishop h7, and bishop d3. Trades. So here, white traded off would, what would usually be the better bishop, right? This is like white's better bishop of, of white's two bishops, and white traded it off. But black wasted a lot of time specifically for that white square bishop. White moved there. I mean, black did. Black mm -hmm. moved here, and then black moved here. Then black played h6. Then black made a fourth move. All of these moves for the sake of the white square bishop. Mm -hmm. And then so trading them off gains a lot of time for white, in theory, because, you know, only spent one move to move his bishop. Right. And so they traded him on, on d3. But still, black should be pretty happy because... Uh, you traded off your worst piece, your worst bishop of the two bishops that you have. That's how it goes. Reptilia says, can we talk about the bishop trap with the advance? Sure, we can do that. I will say, now that I'm recalling, you mentioned the word trap. Dave showed, Dave showed me like two or three different traps in this opening. Yeah? Yeah, hmm. a long time ago, yeah. All right, I, I didn't, believe it. I didn't play it, he just thought it was fun to show me. So Nicola was mentioning knight e2. Yeah, knight e2 is an idea to, instead of knight f3. You could play knight e2 here, or even before h4, I believe, to try to hit the bishop this way. Yeah, that's sort of a sideline, you know. But it's definitely worth uh, noting that it ex exists, at least. Um, e6. I regard this as the most accurate move. doesn't really matter too much. And now white has uh, two main moves. Both develop the dark square bishop. Bishop uh, d2 or f4. Bishop d2, uh, now if you look in like the opening explorer here, it's like pretty close, right? Mm -hmm. Bishop d2 is, I guess, you know, a few hundred more, but um, I would say that really bishop d2 is, is significantly more common. Uh, I had this variation once where the guy played bishop f4 against me, and I checked, and then they blocked with the bishop. Mm -hmm. Then I blocked with my bishop. Right? And then mm -hmm. they attacked my bishop. I backed it on up. Then they attacked my queen, and I backed that up. So kind of funny how that works. See, their bishop was on f4, and I couldn't play queen c7. But now, because I did all this, I can play queen c7. Yeah, yeah. And we both wasted a lot of time. Like, they went back and forth. They played c3, then c4. And I went back and forth with two of my pieces. So it's sort of uh, even time, as far as I'm concerned, there. Mm -hmm. And I think that white should play this way, because if white does different stuff, for example, my dad had a blitz game where white played c3. Uh, this is kind of not great, because now white can't castle queenside, which white should do. White should try to castle queenside in this variation. But he can't do that here, of course, because then it would lose the a pawn. So that's why you should kick the queen away. Like like this, mm -hmm. yeah. And now then castle why do you? No, why is that? Is not obvious to me why they mm -hmm. should castle queenside. 
Yeah, that's a good question. Um, I actually remember watching a video by uh, Yur Malinsky, mm -hmm. and Yur Malinsky explained that when you have this kind of structure, both sides have one center pawn, and you have more space like this, you kind of like to castle opposite sides. Because, uh, well, when you have more space, it's easier for you to maneuver over to your opponent's side of the board. It's easier for you to maneuver to them rather than them to maneuver to you. Okay. Yeah, and I remember you saying that before. I just didn't know that that would apply to, um, I guess it doesn't apply to all positions and openings. Right. But I remember you said that actually a day or two ago. Yeah, when you have more space, mm -hmm. it's kind of easier for you to, to go over and attack them. Yeah, I guess I would have been thinking it wasn't as good maybe because it's a little bit open in front of the king over here. That's one reason why black did this. Black, like, provoked an early c4. Okay. And because it weakens the king. Mm -hmm. Where white doesn't really mind, positionally speaking, to play c4 because that looks pretty good, you know? Yeah. But it does weaken the king a bit. So, yeah, it's kind of a balancing act there. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, here white has a lot of moves. Like, could move the king, move the rook, knight move. What else? Mm -hmm. Queen e2 is a move, apparently. Those are all been played by grandmasters, I'm more than certain. And white, I mean black, rather, usually castles kingside here, which is kind of aggressive. You know, it, in, if you look at, like, old Karo Khan games, like from the 80s and earlier, uh, they usually like to castle the same side as white and play, like, less for an attack. Mm-hmm. But in modern Karo Khan games, you'll see a lot of opposite side castling where black just decides to castle and, and does a pawn break like this to get the square, for example. Mm. That kind of stuff. So okay. this is like the main line of, of bishop f4, like the main line of the bishop f4. I think it's on move 11, bishop f4. Yeah. Yeah, 11, bishop f4. Yeah, b5 next, exactly. Bishop d2, like I said, this is like overtaken bishop f4 as the main move, really. Knight f6. Yeah, castle queen side. So here, white just didn't allow the queen and bishop check and stuff. Mm -hmm. Didn't have to play c4. Right, yeah. So uh, just got developed and castled. And this is, I would think, the, the modern main line. Bishop e7. Yeah. Let's see if I can remember this variation. I think it was with King B1. There was this game, Karyakin against Jan Gustafsson. Like this. Let's see if I can remember. I, I'm using some of the Explorer to help me here. Like this. Yeah, Queen E2, that's right. Right, so here, here's what it was. So Queen D5. So Black wants to really trade those queens off so he doesn't get mated. Mm -hmm. And uh, White would like to prevent that. So white plays bishop e3. And now the best move I think is actually queen b5. You'll see that's a rare move here in the opening explorer. But queen b5 I think is the best move. Jan played, I mean queen b5 is kind of a weird move because it allows you to double the pawns, right? Mm -hmm. But yeah, whatever, deal with it. <laughs> now what do you mean so he won't get mated? I don't see that he's about to get mated. Well, he's not like about to get mated, but you know, something like g4, g5 could happen pretty quickly. Even if you like take the pawn, you have an open G file then. Mm -hmm. So it's it's pretty scary. Meanwhile, like this king's a lot safer because yeah. you don't have a pawn situation like this. Do people tend to trade the queens more when they do opposite side castling? Well, it, people. The, the only reason, like the only de determining factor in a queen trade, is going to be king safety. Right. Yeah. If your king is safer than your opponents, you don't want to trade queens. Mm -hmm. If your uh, king is in more danger, or potentially more danger, like in this case, then you do want to uh, you do want to trade them, usually. Right. Okay. But a lot of times, like the the kings are not in nobody's king's in danger, so that's not really a uh, a factor. Mm -hmm. Like in your game, when the guy tried to trade queens with you and you avoided it, you could have accepted or avoided. That's fine, right? Because mm -hmm. no, nobody's king was in danger. Right. And, uh, yeah, I thought it was smart for you not to trade queens, actually. Although you did end up losing your queen, but <laughs> not really related. <laughs> so, yeah, Karyakin played bishop e3. I forgot what year this game was, but I think it was 2014. And it could have been earlier, 2013, maybe. And, yeah, like I said, queen b5 is a move. But instead, Kar uh, Jan played this. And then bishop c1 x-clown. 
really nice. I like how he went here and then back mm -hmm. because he, this knight's probably going to move back anyway. They're, yeah. Thereby gaining some time for white. It's like he just got bishop c1 for free. Mm -hmm. And white's better here, like barely. Um, Karyakin did win, but I don't really think it's because <laughs> of this position, you know. Karyakin's just uh, too good. Jan's no joke either, but, you know, Karyakin played for the world championship for a reason. Mm -hmm. He's no slouch. So if you want to play this opening with uh, with black, well, if you want to play it with white, you should know the Karyakin game, of course. And with black, you should improve on Jan's play. Like I said, queen b5, I believe, is the best move in this position. So yeah, that's like the this is like the the old main line with knight c3, d takes, and bishop f5. Mm -hmm. You know, takes, takes, bishop f5. This is like the old main line. Definitely really solid for black and white too. You know, white will play this. Um, it's not very crazy, and white can sort of press for a small space advantage, which is uh, usually what white's going for. Like I said, black has some other options here though. Uh, black could, for example, play like uh, Karpov, right? Knight d7. Mm -hmm. Where, um, I'll admit, I don't know this line very well. I do know a trick, though. Let's say we play queen e2. And then uh, knight f6, right? Mm -hmm. What's it going to be? You're asking me? <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. Um... Knight d6. Draw. Mate. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, knight <laughs> d6 mate, exactly. So obviously there are a hundred ways for black to avoid this, like bringing this knight to f6 or even playing e6. Queen e2 is not a great move. It just sets a one-move trap, mm -hmm. right? Most people, they play either knight f3 or knight g5. Um, yeah, to try to provoke an early e6, I guess. In fact, I think that uh, my dad looked at a game in this variation, right, where it was none, none against Georgiev. Mm -hmm. I don't really remember how that one went, but he it was like knight g5 and then h6, which is terrible. Something like that, right? Yeah, this looks kind of right. Yeah. He looked at this win? I don't know, a few days ago, a week ago or so. Mm. Yeah, probably here, right? Then he played this. Yeah, and then he stupidly took, as if none just hangs the piece in one move, right? Then it was check, and here. Oh. Got him. <laughs> <laughs> and the reason he played bishop d3, by the way, is that after check, you can't deflect my queen with g6. I could play bishop takes. Right. If I yeah. had to play queen takes, then I can't go here. But oh, yeah. obviously h6 is just a stupid move. You know, you should develop your pieces and such. Yeah, this is the main line. Bishop d3, e6, knight 1, f3. Eventually they just go back after they get kicked when it isn't, uh, isn't tactically a problem. And then castles, mate. No, no. They do other stuff like <laughs> this and that. So this is like a really solid variation. For black, um, obviously black's bishop didn't really get out like normal, right? Mm -hmm. Normally that bishop does get out, but not this time. Right. What are people saying? I like... We are taking challenges. Seven. After we're done talking about the Carol Khan opening, Buster the Bully. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, we'll play some people. I like king d7. Uh, king d7, I like king g5. I think they mean knight d7 and knight g5, though. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, there are some tricks in that line, especially if they play an early h6 like we showed. Yeah, but white doesn't even have to play knight g5. White can go like this, you know? And then uh, the, sort of the problem, the, why they play an early knight g5 is like, you don't have like a perfect move here for white. You don't really want to trade. Oh, well, that is the main move, right? But if, you know, you go back, it's not necessarily the best square for the knight in the structure. Mm -hmm. Something like this. It's okay. Play an early c5, though. Yeah, b6, bishop b7's coming. Black will equalize pretty easily, I think, in this variation. Although maybe you could know some wrinkles and and uh, get some advantage if they play inaccurately. 
But yeah, knight d7 is like a really solid, <clears throat> excuse me, it's a really solid variation. And uh, it's definitely good if you don't mind to draw with black or you want to grind it out like in an endgame. You definitely should want to play knight d7, knight gf6. But just to watch out for mate, right? <laughs> don't get mated if you're not paying attention. Yeah. Paying attention is free, I always say. <laughs> and yeah, there's also knight f6 here. Of course, you got to take it. You got to double their pawns, right? Both ways of taking are playable. Um, I feel like G takes is almost losing by force. <laughs> Maybe somebody who plays it would disagree with me. Um, e takes has a, a problem where if you look at the structure, uh, both sides have four pawns against three, right? Mm -hmm. White's four against three is on the queen side, where black's four against three is on the king side. But the problem is black's four against three pawn majority is doubled. So you can't make a passed pawn by force. So if you take all the pieces off the board except the kings and pawns, it's a loss. Black's losing there. Because mm -hmm. white could make a passed pawn and black can't. Okay, I see. You know, all white has to do is play f3 and h3 and you can't make a passed pawn without white helping you. But okay, he won't do that, hopefully. <laughs> and so that's kind of the problem with this variation. Um, whereas, obviously, the problem with taking with the G pawn is that, well, you also get an isolated pawn on the H file. Um, I actually, when I have played white in this variation and I take, usually black takes with the G pawn, in my experience. Oh, okay. Yeah, you know, that's more common. It's uh, a little bit more, I mean, it's more aggressive and, you know, ambitious way to play. Mm -hmm. I always like to play with G3. Um, not so early. Maybe, okay, it says C3 is the most common move, so that makes sense. But I would always play with the move g3. In fact, that's why a lot of times people play queen d5 here to try to stop g3 specifically and also provoke c4. Yeah. How much do I have to donate to to play Big Ben probably? <laughs> <laughs> or lay. <laughs> Going to have to be more for that one. Right? <laughs> or yeah. less maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, to play him, you know. You might have to go to his stream and donate, though. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he's not, you know, on the stream, so you can't play him on here. But on his stream, he has certain nights, Buster the the Bully, where he plays viewers. And I don't know when those are because it varies, but definitely mm -hmm. on Sundays, sub-Sundays, he plays. So if you, if you sub to his channel, you have a very good chance of playing him because he plays – um, as many subs as he can for two or three hours. Now to lay him, you'll have <laughs> you'll have to take that out with him. Hey, Laszlo Damas. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's an indecent proposal. <laughs> That's one way to put it. <laughs> have you ever seen the movie? I have not. Oh, they actually do. At, I don't remember all the details. I want to say it was like Robert Redford and maybe Demi Moore, but um, somebody offers all this money to and the husband to the husband. I think, hey, if I can you know, bang your wife, mm -hmm. I'll give you a million dollars. <laughs> Interesting, indeed. So you you know you asked the right person. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, Nate Chick, he, uh they you know confirm what you said. Yeah, yeah, I saw that. That movie was pretty dumb. But I did see it. Anyways, this is the best way for white to set up. <clears throat> With playing g3, bishop g2 is really nice because, uh, you know, if they put their rook on the half open file, it's kind of stuffed by the mm -hmm. pawn structure here. And uh, I always, whenever I'd had this with white, I'd play knight h4 like as early as possible. Like I'd get castle to play knight h4. h4 is a really good square for the knight because um, obviously it can't be attacked by a g pawn. But also it stops black's pawn break here. Oh, yeah. Which is uh, pretty nice. It that's just keeps an isolated pawn. Typically on the side of the board, that's no good, but right. I can see how it is in this position. Oh, yeah, Woody Harrelson. Hmm. I forgot th about that. That was important. I love Woody. Yeah, I think he's a, a chess fan, actually. Oh, yeah, he is. Yeah. Yeah. Old Woody. And he's a um, weed lover. Oh, I don't know why you gestured at me for that. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I have to grab a tissue. I'll be right back. All right. Hmm. 
He's rated 2300. Is wow, that? that can't be true. No, just kidding, right? He said just kidding. Yeah, <laughs> That's that, what I, I thought. Knew that, I knew that too. I thought maybe 1300. <laughs> but I've seen him, you know, at some opening ceremony. Yeah, I think it was uh, actually Carlson Karyakin, right? Yeah, it was something big. I remember he was yeah. there. All right. <laughs> All right, so yeah, that's just a little briefing of Knight F6 here. Uh, not as common, and I don't know as much theory, so mm -hmm. <laughs> I didn't look at too much about it. So that's like mostly all of Knight C3 or Knight D2, right? Mm -hmm. um, there are some like weird sidelines. Like I've even faced, uh, I played a guy who's 2400 feet A, and he played this. Hmm. Yeah, I was like, what? And uh, I played b6, which is not necessarily bad. Um, I looked it up in a book later by Lars Schandorf, a quality chess book, mm -hmm. and uh, he recommends to play e5 in this position. Hmm. Yeah, crazy, right? Yeah. Really complicated stuff. Yeah, I don't <clears throat> understand that at all. Well, it attacks the center. So if he takes your pawn, you could try to take this pawn. Although you got to watch out for a fork, so you actually can't do that, right? Just get forked. Boom. Big fork. Oh no, the bishop's there. So yeah, you could theoretically do this, right? I'm crazy again. Wait, so go back. No, wait, what? So they're not gonna. Wait, what? Go back one more. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so they're not gonna take with the pawn. Well, that hangs the knight. Oh yeah. Okay, I didn't see that. Okay. No. Yeah, I, I also missed this bishop. Yeah, that's why I always play bishop f8. Yeah. <laughs> Just always keep it there. <laughs> Thank you, sick tone. For the 99 cent today. Adonis, why don't you type in a X Clam Spencer? See, uh, see all about me. Is the young <laughs> guy her son? Kind of. He's my stepson. Young. Jeez. <laughs> 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 so yeah. Anyways, I don't. I didn't uh, really look up what to do after e5. Obviously. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, it's a pretty rare move. I mean, e5 is probably the best move because Shandorf recommends it. Mm -hmm. He wouldn't recommend something that's bad, I don't think, on purpose. That'd be kind of funny. Like, I got you. Hey, we have a we have a command. Oh, I told him to do that. Oh, yeah. I didn't hear that part. Okay, okay. I'm sorry. I said oh, that. in Bulgarian, it's K O H or whatever. <laughs> I guess he wouldn't call it O H, right? Um, I don't know. I understand. A Pokemon master. That's true, Adonis. <laughs> So that's most of uh, Knight C3 for you. Uh, yeah, we could talk about E5 now, right? And somebody wanted me to mention that there is a, uh, a trap. I'm actually playing Pokemon right now. Wow. Playing a sword and shield? Sword and or shield? And I think what they're referring to is with Bishop F5, mm -hmm. H4, I believe, mm -hmm. is the one that they want. Oh, Platinum. Platinum's my favorite game. I love Gen 4. Gen 4 all the way. I, I hope there's going to be Gen 4 remakes. I think there will be. E6 is a blunder here. Mm -hmm. oh, let me uh, hide it and see if you can see how to win. Okay. Um. Let's see. No, I don't know. I mean, you can attack the queen, but I don't see how to win. You can block it. Um, Whose turn is it? White. White, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's true. Um, let's see. What happens? Queen H4. I thought the chat would be all over this. You're always talking up the chat. <laughs> oh, Nicola's got it, though. Oh, couldn't you go um, G4? Yeah, G4. And then H5? Right. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Let's see. I don't know. 
Well, I don't know what from here. Uh, it's pretty tough. I think you can do it. Only one more move. So well, it's game over. I mean, I would just um, go ahead and move the knight. Knight f3. Would be... You really take never play f3 seriously, huh? <laughs> F3 wins the bishop. Oh, that does win it. Okay, I thought maybe I wasn't. I don't take Can't this. Move anyway. Well, I mean, I guess it seems like in this but... position you mm -hmm. did take it too seriously. <laughs> yeah, oh, the okay, I did finally here. trap him. Okay, I thought he got away, so I was trying to figure out what else. Yeah. Oh, but, okay. Well, if you're trying to win, you got to play F3. Other yeah, yeah. moves are just normal. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. Here yeah. Or there, F3. Okay. Yeah. I see it. So that's a common trap. Yeah, that's one reason to play H4, is that it? Uh, it's it's like has that trap associated with it. Mm. This was famously played in the 2000, 2004 <laughs> World Championship match between uh, Kramnik and and Laco. Um, it was either two thousand four or six, mm -hmm. and um, I th it must have been four, right? Because I think he lost in two thousand six to Anand, and uh, Kramnik had to win this game to tie the match and retain his title. Because that was the rule that if the match was tied, Kramnik was still world champion. Mm. So uh, he played h4, and, and Laco played h6, which I think is just not good. You should play h5 in this variation. h5 is good. And, uh, I mean, I don't know, like, hardly any theory here. Yeah, c4 is the main move, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, I see. Oh, yeah, you have to play h5. I was trying to figure out why. Okay, I got it. Yeah. Somebody asked about bishop b4 check. I guess for, so c3 is bishop takes b1, I suppose. Like this. So c3, they'll take the knight. But what if I play anything other than c3? Like block this. Or move the king. It seems like anything else would win the piece, right? Um, yeah. Just trap no matter what. But c3 won't win the piece. That's true. So it would be a last-ditch effort, yeah. But h4 is not, like, a very common move. It's pretty common, actually. Especially because Kramnik won the world championship with that move, you know. But m more commonly, people play either knight f3 or knight c3. Knight c3, the point is to stop the bishop from going here and thereby preparing g4. There was a nice game between Kasparov and Navara. From, uh, it was a, like Kasparov's you know, return to chess, even though it was just rapid. <laughs> mm, yeah. So it wasn't like a serious return to chess. It was like this. And then Kasparov played like that. Yeah, and then he played, most people play h4 here, but he actually played bishop e3 which is a good move. Did Kasparov play that? Um, h4, they'll sacrifice a pawn, will black. h5, knight f4. Now you're like kind of in trouble here, you know? Mm -hmm. You don't want to let them do this. So they just give up the pawn. And then take here. They like attack the center, you know? They say that like you made a lot of knight moves and my bishop's really good and you played these moves. And there's so many arrows, nobody knows what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> um... I don't, I don't really know the theoretical evaluation of this variation. I assume it's okay for black because you don't see white going for this too frequently in an advanced mm -hmm. Karakon. What, oh, what does the engine say at that? I don't know. Just out of curiosity. Mm -hmm. See, I liked white a little. Now it's, it's, it's about mm -hmm. equal. Yeah, that's fair. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what I'd figure. I like black a little bit. Ben often plays a funny trap tactic in the Botvinnik Karls defense. What is the Botvinnik Karls defense? Hmm. Hey, Nate May 99. I don't know. Avisar. <laughs> oh, but anyways, back to that Kasparov game. It was here, Bishop E3. Now, Navarra played an extremely rare move, and it was computer number one recommended, so I'm sure it was preparation. He played Knight E7. Mm -hmm. Yeah, pretty w weird looking move because mm -hmm. usually you'd expect maybe knight c6 first or takes right. or something. Yeah. And then Kasparov played like at some point he played f4, f5, and then after takes he played g5 mm -hmm. so that this pawn was stuck here and the bishop was blocked. And then he played knight f4 
and he was like crushing him positionally and then it was the dirtiest trick of a lifetime at the end of the game it was such a great trick <laughs> and, and navarro won navarro tricked him so bad Aww. it was the biggest trick ever and i remember watching it live and i'm like oh kasparov's got this like that's too bad because he's so evil you know and then and then navarro tricked him and i was like oh <laughs> like i never <laughs> saw it coming it was so crazy what was kasparov's expression uh nonplussed really <laughs> yes yeah nonplussed he's like oh i can't believe this happened to me the greatest player of all time <laughs> 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 that, I guess that would have been in the last five years or so. I remember when. Yeah, I think it was 2017. Yeah, I remember because Ben and I were already married. But, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that was great. I loved the end of that game. You guys should definitely find that like on YouTube or something and watch it because it was so good. Yeah, how do you spell Navarra? Navarra. N a v a r a. Okay, Navarra. So. I hope you got a, a request here. Do you guys want any drinks or anything? Um. No, thank you. I don't know if you have enough money for a drink. If you do, I would love some sweet tea, no lemon. Well, get a dollar. You can get one out of the cash register then. Do you Thank recommend you, going through many popular openings before having an established repertoire? Um, I mean, you should, you know, know the basics of some openings so that you can decide what your repertoire is. Mm -hmm. I would say. But um, it depends on your level, right? You know, how much time you should dedicate to the opening depends on your level. Now, who got made it instantly? Some was Trying not to learn. Oh. <laughs> that happens a lot on the... Yeah. Mid, you know. And so what, we looked at this and that. Mm-hmm. So the main line is, uh, the most common now is, is knight f3. This is known as the short variation. Although it is a pretty long variation. <laughs> but named after Nigel short mm -hmm. here, bishop e2. Nigel would also sometimes play a3, but uh, bishop e2. And then, yeah, there's a ton of theory here, and I don't really know any of it. <laughs> Even though I've played the Karo Khan with black, I, um, I actually would avoid this. Um, but yeah, people play like knight d7. A c5 is really popular, though. Although, according to this opening explorer, knight d7 is more common. But I remember there was, like, a lot of times people were playing this. And, yeah, queen b6. Knight like c3. Like a French or something. Yeah, exactly. No, it exactly is like Except an advanced French. Except for the French. light square bishops out. That's one benefit. And the downside is that they made two moves with the c-pawn, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I remember that, uh, I think it was Larry Christensen, he had either white or black here and he won or lost instantly like i forgot it was in a u.s championship mm -hmm. but this line was like really popular for a while um at, the, at a high level and even and then i think they started to do this yeah yes yes this looks pretty familiar to me oh, okay yeah yeah there's a shankland game here he had black I think he lost. <laughs> Poor Shanky. Aww. Yeah, a lot of American players in this variation. Yeah. Or, like, black can play with a delayed delayed C5, like, developing all the pieces. You know, kind of like that. Mm -hmm. um, There's also a game where black played bishop G6 that I know. It was uh, Adams with white against Conquest. Mm -hmm. It was here. And then, uh, let's see how this went. Maybe it was Castle's... He moved one of the knights. Yeah, and then he played like c3. Mm, how did this go? He moved the other knight. Then it was a4. Yeah. It was a4. And then he played rook c8. The a4 is like a really good positional move. I don't know if this is exactly the right position if I got the move order right. Or maybe he didn't castle early. But his idea is, like, if you play a5, you don't want to play c5, right? You don't want to play a5 and c5. That'll weaken b5 quite a lot. Oh, okay. So he didn't do that. He played like this and then played a6. But eventually he played b4, and then he totally locked him on the queen side and was positionally better and won because of that. He played, like, some moves first, like rookie one. And then if c5, there was, like, c4, and it was good for white. 
with a lot of analysis. And so uh, black could never, eventually he did play b4 and black could never play c5 and he got positionally crushed. That was Adam's conquest, but I don't know if the move order was correct for the record. Mm -hmm. What are people saying? I play 1d5 against everything, even against c4. You play 1d5? <laughs> I don't think so. GM Bobby Fisher says, did Ben ban the Botez topless guy? No. Not to my knowledge. He threatened to if Botez didn't change his name. And I sent him, I whispered to him, and because um, I thought he seemed like a nice fellow, actually. just was inappropriate, maybe, with the joke. And I, I sent him a whisper and asked him, was he going to change his name, and he didn't answer me. But I don't think he actually got banned. Hmm. Ben just said he, if he was going to chat, then he would need to change his name. And so Botez just didn't chat after that. <laughs> 1C4 is pretty pro, Buster. That's true. So here, when I had black and I played the Karakhan and they played the advanced variation, mm -hmm. I'd always play c5 here. Hmm. A pretty good move. Um, definitely uh, combative, right? Wa yep. Wasting a tempo immediately, <laughs> but attacking the center immediately. Yeah. So the best move is to take, where I would always play e6, but I guess knight c6 is slightly more common. But I would always play e6. It's like a French now where I've wasted a tempo. Mm -hmm. I did block my bishop like a French, but right. they took already, which is pretty rare in an advanced French for them to take so early, right? Mm -hmm. um, so this is like how I would play, although... Um, they don't usually take in the French. Yeah, well, in some lines you can to like yeah. put your knight here, but it, it, that's usually in the middle game, you know, mm -hmm. or like at least move 10 or so. So, yeah, I mean, I never actually achieved this over the board. Nobody ever took on c5 against me. Uh, I had a guy who played like a trap and I fell for it. It was like this. This is a bad way for white to play, but there is a trap that I fell for. Like this. And then here's the blunder. Gotta hide that. <laughs> we actually looked at this before. Oh, yeah? But you probably forgot. Oh, I'm sure I did. <laughs> so can you win with white? Um, let's see. That's illegal, and the move that you meant is not correct, Nicola. Still, that's not even correct, surprisingly. Even after you corrected the move <laughs> to the one that you meant. Mm. So the main advantage in comparison to the French is the earlier development of the light square bishop. Yes. But positionally wise, but position wise, but position wise, that might be right. How does it evolve? Well, you got to give it a... Uh, you got to use a, the correct stone on it, and then it'll evolve into its next Pokemon. But yeah, a lot of times this bishop on the white square bishop is just on this diagonal looking really nice on h7, b1, mm -hmm. or it'll go to g4, kind of like here, and, uh, and take the knight or pin the knight so that it attacks the dark square pawns for, for white in the center on d4 and, and e5. Yeah, could it? Does Nicola bishop f3? Seems like a good queen a4. Oh, that's what Nicola wanted. Oh. After bishop takes f3. Oh, thank you, sweetie. I got it. Yeah, Nicola, king f8, x clam. Haha, <laughs> got you. King f8, x clam. How's it going, chess boy? Pog you. <laughs> oh, hey, chess boy, Pog you. How's it going? I just uh, unbanned him on Ben's channel. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, video game pianist. Hey, we video just game about pianist. You. How's it going? Nice. <laughs> yeah, we love video games on this channel. I was telling him that I didn't realize um, that you were f 
famous Martin. Um, and Spencer loves video games and he loves yeah, video see? game music. <laughs> <laughs> Got the Triforce and everything to prove it. <laughs> and um, and so then I then last night I was looking at your wiki. I'm like, oh crap, he's actually famous. <laughs> <laughs> I love your stream video game pianist. Yeah. Give him a little shout out. Triforce for the win. <laughs> That's right. Hey, do you guys know why uh, Ganondorf hates the internet so much? Because of all the links. <laughs> do what now? You wouldn't understand the joke. Uh, it's, you'd have to know the people in the game. Uh, <laughs> let's see if I did it right. Yeah, yeah, I did it right. All nice. right, so anyway, back to our lesson here. So, yeah, queen so f4 is the right idea, but it doesn't quite win. Okay. Yeah, you've got to take on c6 first. If you play queen a4, I'll take here. Mm -hmm. And then if you take here with check, yeah, I won't take back because then I'll lose. You'll take here fork town. Mm -hmm. And if I move my king, you take my bishop check. Then when I'm not in check, you'll take that. And then white will be a bishop ahead. Mm-hmm. Or if you block here, I'll take the rook check and so on. So, hey, but Ganondorf has a working. sword now. What? This is so. wrong. Hey, let. Oh, this it's is... closed on the bottom. I mean, that's. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's. Def oh, there it goes. Yeah, that was a defective situation. All right, I fixed it. So that's why White has to actually take here first. Now playing King F8 would be absurd because he took a piece for free. Mm -hmm. So you have to take back. Yeah. And now we can do this. And now you're pretty much boned. Mm -hmm. Because you can't defend both things. And as we discussed, this loses. Oh, so, yeah. yeah, I fell for this trap, and then uh, I was losing the whole game. I fought back pretty hard, but I couldn't, I couldn't make it back. But I made the guy sweat it out a bit. <laughs> yeah. So that's too bad. For the record, if you want to play this but not lose, you can do like a ton of stuff. Like you just take this and then take here. Black's probably a little better there, because it's just a good version of a French. And that's why white shouldn't really play this way. White should take here first. Yeah. And then uh, you could try to, like, protect the pawn. Mm -hmm. But, um, or you can let him take and play, like, some a3, b4 or something. You know, there's a lot of ways to go. Ain't it funny how it goes? <laughs> Getting paid half a million for a show. So is that about it for the advanced French? I mean, I mean, uh, Carol Khan, of course. Hmm. Yeah, I guess. There are some weird moves you could play, but. All right, so we looked at the main line, the knight c3 and the advanced. Let me just check to see what else we can do. We could look at the exchange variation, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, Definitely. takes, takes. Now, uh, well, we can first look at the Panov, which is c4 here. Okay. There's uh, like two ways that white can play from here. They can play c4, or they can play like bishop d3, c3, and such. A more solid setup. Yeah. yeah. What are you reading? Just some stuff. And the pawn chain system. Yeah. Mm. Knight f6. Knight c3. And yeah, there are a couple ways to play this. Like a lot of people with black, they maybe they play the Nimzo Indian, right? And so they'll go for e6 here. And then after knight f3, they'll play this, which is a direct transposition into a Nimzo Indian defense. Mm. You know, imagine they played these three moves first, and white played these three moves first, like a Nimzo Indian. Then later, black played c5 takes, and then d5. That would be in this position with a Nimzo Indian move order. Um, so usually white gets an isolated queen pawn here, like this, isolated queen pawn situation. Um, at least here, black hasn't got out the bishop. You know, like imagine an isolated queen pawn where I could play bishop g4. That would be a lot better for black. Obviously getting out the bishop quickly and efficiently and pinning this so that the pawn is weak so we can target that pawn. It would be beneficial to black. But since we can't jump over our pawn, uh, we can't do that. That's against the rules. So, yeah, this is a, a pretty, pretty main line, I would say. 
black doesn't have to play like a dimso indian like if you're not a dimso indian player you probably don't want to do that also black can like play here for example this is like a pretty nice way i think should equalize for sure takes takes yeah usually they take so that your king is less uh protected mm -hmm. with the knight there like this yeah and this could also transpose from a a collie you can get this position with uh with both sides i guess i've never played the collie me neither yeah i don't even like the, the name <laughs> right well apparently uh the guy's name that's named after he actually would pronounce it cole oh yeah that's what apparently people have said Mm -hmm. I don't know if that's true, but I've heard that. <laughs> but it's spelled C-O-L-L-E. So that's, uh, you know, that's another way to go with black. The most, uh, the most like, I would say the most Karo Khan kind of way for black to play, like in, in the Karo Khan style, is to play knight C6, mm -hmm. which will uh, allow for the bishop to be developed in the most aggressive and ambitious possible way where uh, there are a couple of options for white, like bishop g5 is the main line, I would say. Uh, putting maximum pressure on d5, right? And yeah, a move that's become really popular, and it's even the most popular now, I remember because Dureyev used to play this all the time, bishop e6. And you know if you're playing uh, a Karo Khan and Dureyev does it, that it's, it's the right thing to do. <laughs> Dureyev's the seal of approval for a Karo Khan variation. Mm. And bishop e6 is a weird move, but uh, obviously it defends the d-pawn and develops a bishop, so that's pretty nice. And if you ever take here, they'll try to take this way, which is pretty cool. Then you can develop your bishop if you need to. Um, so that's why white plays like some... Also, black could try to take the pawn even. Could try to. Mm -hmm. Well, it won't work, because I guess you could take here first, then fork. But then mm -hmm. maybe there's like knight b4. It doesn't really seem like it's good. Though a3 is the most common move, which is pretty funny. Yeah, that's weird. I had this position before, and I <clears> played uh, e6. Also, by the way, dc is a move. I played e6, and then I played like bishop e7, knight e4, and I equalized pretty easily. It was against Ger Garrett Smith. Yes, it was Garrett Smith. That was his name. It was like this. He played here. And I played knight e4. Yeah, see, it's the most common move. I didn't even know it. I was just on my own. Mm -hmm. But I was like, yes, knight e4. When I, after the game, I was like, that is the best move. And uh, so, yeah, black is like okay with trading some pieces because black has a lot less space. White played this to gain space and avoid the isolated pawn. Although this pawn is still weak on d4. And if black can get in some pawn breaks without losing material, that'll be really good for black. So white's putting pressure to avoid that putting pressure on c6, you know, to avoid that. Mm -hmm. I ended up losing this game to Garrett, but, uh, you know, he was higher rated than me by quite a bit. But I think this is a fine variation. <clears throat> also, there's uh, some interesting stuff with knight f3, bishop g4. This is a really sharp variation. They take it and play queen b3. Remember how we always talk about when you develop this bishop, they could target that pawn? Mm -hmm. And so then they'll take here, because then you have to take with the pawn to double your pawns up. And now uh, your knight's hanging, so you're going to go like this. And then they win that pawn, right? Mm -hmm. And then you take back. Yeah, then big check. And then after knight takes, you throw in an interme intermezzo check here. Here. You can't block with the queen, because then you'll lose your rook. So you have to play the unsightly king e7 only move takes and is queen d7 the most po yeah it is knight c3 is also a move though yeah like this check queen takes 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 yeah so i've seen this position before actually <clears throat> now what window is that that you have open there oh that's explorer yeah yeah just to explore the opening a bit. I don't know the tools as well as I should on chess.com. Me neither. Somebody in the chat just like told me about this, uh, you know, like a few weeks ago or whatever. I knew it was there, I just forgot. <laughs> and um, yeah, so here both sides have kind of a bad pawn structure. Black's king is like inconveniently placed, but it's not so scary here because it's an endgame kind of. Mm -hmm. So it's not like he's going to get mated. 
White doesn't really have to exchange queens, no. It is the most common move by quite a bit, however. Bishop g5 is also a move. Interesting. X-ray, right? Mm -hmm. Although after f6, aren't, aren't you forced to trade? I guess you could check here. Yeah, it's true that, like, the king is misplaced, but it's not as if white's going to get a big attack. There's no pieces on the board. Going to attack with this. You know, like, bishop g5 is the attacking move with that, but then we'll play f6, king f7. So, yeah, the king isn't in too much danger. It's just inconveniently placed because it's gonna you're going to have to spend time to develop your bishop by moving your king and then getting your rook in. So you're going to have to spend a lot of time to get coordinated mm -hmm. is kind of the problem. But yeah, this variation has a pretty high draw rate, I would say. I could see that. Yeah, a lot of pieces get <clears> traded. <throat> yeah. Uh, it's really sharp, like, here, and then all the pieces get traded, and then it's, like, boring. <laughs> and also, if you want to avoid that with black, you can play knight b6 here, but I think that black should be worse in the main line, if I remember right, because I was analyzing this, you know, many years ago, and, and I found that I couldn't equalize but maybe things are, are different now that computers are, you know, five or ten years stronger, however mm -hmm. however uh, long ago I, I looked at it. So, yeah, those are the two main ideas for white, to play bishop g5 or to go into that endgame variation. Okay, cool. I definitely need to go back at, over all of this. <laughs> oh, yeah, you're not going to remember it all. Well, because, <laughs> I mean, even though I don't remember all from the other openings, Mm -hmm. It was way more familiar. Totally, totally. I remember some of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Also, we can look at if they play an exchange variation without playing c4, like the traditional exchange variation. Mm -hmm. There's a no check says, does white have to I exchange? Oh, oh, yeah, that's right. You did answer yeah. that. Yeah. Avisar. <laughs> so here, black, uh, I'll tell you the main line, and I think black's worse after it. Mm -hmm. Black will play it knight f6. Bishop f4 and bishop g4. This is like the main line. But I always thought it should be bad for black. Like a little bit bad, not too bad. We, uh, I analyzed this game for the uh, Sultan Khan lecture. Mm -hmm. Although I don't remember if I actually ended up looking at it. I think I did. Sultan Khan played f3, which is not the best move. Queen b3 again taking advantage of the bishop move is the way to go. And uh, you could play queen c8 or queen d7. Um, the problem with queen d7 is eventually they're going to play like this. And that's why queen c8 is more common. Um, I think both are just like a little bit worse for black. And black shouldn't be, I mean, pretty close to equal. But there are better ways that black can go about this. I wouldn't really recommend black to play this variation, honestly. Even though it's the main line. Hmm. Kind of funny how that works. Yeah. Um, but there are a lot of ways that black can play. Queen c7 is an interesting move. It stops bishop f4. Much like a um, an exchange queen's gambit decline, but with colors reversed. Mm -hmm. You know, this does look like a queen's gambit decline that, you know, what black would have these pieces. And uh, in, in when we analyzed that, we talked about white playing queen c2 to stop bishop f5 in the same way queen c7 stops bishop f4. Um, and then they'll play knight e2 to try to play bishop f4. So then you provoke f3 with this move. Because then if they play bishop f4, it loses to bishop takes e2 which will win a piece for black. Well, actually, I guess it, they could just trade, right? They could take here and then take here and king takes. Because oh, yeah. this isn't defended. It would lose a piece if this was defended. So they'll play f3. I guess they could also castle according to this. But then, yeah, they'll go here and then bishop f4. But now we can play e5 x clam. This was recommended in a book. Maybe it was the Shandorf book, but it might have also been the, uh, the Huska book. Yavanka Huska. Is that how you say her name? I don't know. Hmm. <laughs> I don't know that Yo book. Yovana Huska. I forgot her first name, uh -huh. I guess. <laughs> What's the name of the book? It's know? like Play the Carol Khan, something like oh, that. Oh, okay. Like, you know, play the, get that Carol Khan going. <laughs> 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 yeah. So this is like a really sharp line. You'll see that if you look in the Explorer here, really good percentages for black, right? Yeah. Um, I think usually white just isn't ready for this. You know, takes, knight takes, and you play bishop d6 and get your knight out. And black is an isolated pawn, but white's played f3, which is kind of ugly. And black is going to be pretty active here. So if you like active play, this is the way to go. And black scores well, and I think is objectively at least equal here. Mm -hmm. So this is a fine way to play the exchange variation with black. And unlike the exchange French, the exchange Carol Khan is actually like pretty, uh, 
pretty could be pretty complicated like this. Yeah. This isn't a symmetrical structure. And that's one reason why some people play both the French and the Karo Khan. Because if you play the if if you play them both, then let's say for example your opponent is like plays the exchange French and you don't want to draw with black, then you could play the Karo Khan against that person. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then uh you're I guess less likely to draw because the pawn structure will be asymmetrical. Mm-hmm. So oh, a lot of people do play both of those openings, like Bereyev. Yeah. We looked at a Bereyev game uh, yesterday. Yeah. And he plays both French and Karakhan for that reason. Well, maybe not for the exchange French reason, but, you know, <laughs> for some reason. Mm-hmm. Also, uh, you can play, like, with g6, bishop f5, I think is a good way to play. My dad had played that against Udasin once. I don't know if he played it here or played knight f6 first, then g6, bishop f5. Mm-hmm. Kind of interesting. It doubles the pawns, of course, but uh, it gets rid of the, the bad bishop for the good bishop, which is kind of nice. Oh, Lolly's uh, got something to say to you. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Lolly, how's it going? <laughs> All right, so that was uh, all of those. I think we got a couple more we can look at. <clears throat> Yeah, how about the two knights variation, right? All right. Like this. Yeah, this was a favorite of Bobby Fisher's. He liked to play this way. And there are a lot of ways to go about this. Bishop g4 is by far the most common move in the history of chess. If you look at some modern games, it's a lot of knight f6. You get a lot of knight f6. Oh, yeah, Lolly knows. Knight f6 or bishop g4. Exactly. Oh, a minister of truth wants to get unbanned by my dad. <laughs> <laughs> so moderator didn't like Oh, that. I'll unban you for that. <laughs> oh, yeah. I sent you... I thought I sent you a message. Minister of Truth. Yeah, Kamala's evil. Everybody knows that. <laughs> yeah, I can unban you, but... I don't, um, I don't know about the, the Plutocrats, <laughs> but I, I'm definitely anti-Kamala, yes. I think uh, trying to learn... Bandy. Hey, send me a message um, on Twitch... Minister, because if you don't, I won't remember to unban you. <laughs> now be good. Don't don't make trying to learn mad. <laughs> but it's fine. He doesn't like. I like Kamala, but I, I need to do some research. I don't like to hear some of this stuff that that you've mentioned. All right. Yeah, send me a note, Minister. I got you. So knight f six is like a hot move that super GMs have been playing in the last five years or so in this position. Mm-hmm. Uh, e5 is the way to go. Now, weak players, when they do this, because they don't know what they're doing, they go here, and then they transpose to, like, a French where they've played c6, you know? Mm-hmm. And then they're, like, worse, because they it's like a French, but they played c6, which is bad. So a strong player goes here. Uh, doesn't mind the exchange. In fact, usually white plays knight e2 here to avoid the exchange. Mm-hmm. And white's actually trying to trap the knight is the idea here in this variation. Queen b6, threatening mate. So d4. Then black's like, haha, my knight's perfectly safe and deal with it, right? But then white plays this one. Bam. <laughs> knight f, g1. Yeah. Trying to never play f3. Right. <laughs> yes. So f6, <clears throat> never play f6 before never play f3. Knight g5. That's why we played f6, so we can protect our knight. Takes, takes, f4. And, yeah, knight f7 and knight e4 are both moves. There was a good game here played in, I think it was 2016. It was Maxime Bashir Lagrave against Anand. And Anand, uh, Anand played one of those moves. <laughs> I can't remember which one. Anand ended up winning. He actually played a little bit inaccurately at some point. He played like knight a6 at some point, and he should, if you're looking up that game, knight a6 is inaccurate. He should have played c5 when he did that and played knight c6. Um, and he would have equalized there. Hmm. So Anand was worse, but then MVL blundered like a really complicated blunder that uh, that Anand found. So that's pretty cool. But yeah, both of these moves are moves, and if you're playing this variation, this is like where you'd start analyzing. Mm-hmm. It's kind of funny that uh, white plays knight e2 and then knight f1. Or knight fg1. <clears throat> Pretty funny stuff. You know a lot of classic games for, even for a master level, a lot of master level players don't Thank you. <laughs> don't know classic games. 
Well, that one was more modern because it was 2016. Well, still, but it's still <laughs> a modern classic. That's true. It's a modern Fa- classic. Famous slash classics. Yeah, I think I just, it was even in the Sinkfield Cup. Yeah. I just heard a noise. I bet that's Ben coming in here. Perhaps. This game is terrible, says Nicola26. <laughs> For, you know, because F6 and F3? Or we got to get rid of that before he comes in. <laughs> <laughs> Are you guys playing F6 and F3 in here? <laughs> <laughs> we think we just heard Ben come in, but we're not sure. Could be Archer. So, mm-hmm. <clears throat> yeah. So, yeah, Bishop G4, like I said, that's the more common move uh, in the history of chess because Knight F6 is kind of a new move. Mm-hmm. Yeah, H3. Yeah, you could take it or back it up. Uh, there was a famous Fisher Petrosian game here. It's in my 60 memorable games, but I'll admit that I don't even remember which one he did. More people take, though. Hmm. Yeah. I think Petrosian would have done it like this. This seems like how Petrosian would have done it. Yeah. Yeah, and then it was Bishop D2. Or no, wait, he played like Knight B1 at some point. When did he do that? Was it A3? G3? I think he did play G3. Maybe it was like this. I don't know when he played knight b1, but I remember he did play knight b1. I'll never figure it out. <laughs> it might have been bishop d2 instead of a3. Those are both moves here. Maybe it was even after bishop b4. No, no, knight b1's not a move there. Yeah, at some point he played knight b1, but I can't remember where. Just trying to play through the main lines to see if knight b1's ever a move. Now, see here they even castle queenside. Yeah, which makes sense. If you play g4, you should probably castle queenside. Mm-hmm. Weakens the dark squares. Yeah, this is a really solid line for black. You give up your bishop pair, but you just put all your pawns on white squares, and you're just like rock solid. And white can play with g3, bishop, g2, castle, kingside. Or like we saw, g4, bishop, d2, castle, queenside. Mm-hmm. And, uh, I mean, g4 looks better because it's like more aggressive, but obviously it, it's pretty weakening of the dark squares. Um... Yeah, and black's got options, too. Like, black can play with bishop e7 or bishop b4. Um, black can also take at some point or try to hold steady there. Um, but, yeah, it's flexible variation. Both sides can play a lot of different moves or the same moves but in different move orders. But I would definitely recommend looking up that game, that fisher Petrosian game. It's in my 60 memorable games. Yeah, I'm definitely. almost certain that he took it. <clears throat> but he could have played bishop h5. Yeah. Most of the time, bishop h5, g4, and then knight e5. Yeah, that's true. Although, I guess the pawn's hanging, so they have to play, like, d3 first. Yeah. 